here at the happiest place on earth. No, it's not Disneyland. It's Blizzard Entertainment. And uh, I just happen to be joined by lead designer of StarCraft II, Dustin Browder. How are you doing, sir? Doing very good. Cool. Uh, so we are here today checking out, I don't know if it's the beta beta, but it's StarCraft II. I mean, you guys are putting out like the actual wide beta soon. Is that what we're looking at today, or is it kind of a self-contained? You're looking at something that what the beta might look like here in, okay. in the near future. It is it is a version of the game that is getting closer and closer all the time to that to that magical state where we'll put it out for the beta, but it's not quite there yet. So it's very close, but, but not 100%. Can, can you give us an idea of what, what the beta is going to contain in terms of, you know, the percentage of units from each faction? We'll see what, how many maps, you know, what kind of modes are going to be in there. So you'll see all of the units for all of the factions, everything we could think to cram in there that we want testing on, which is going to be everything. Thing that we've currently got. Um, we're going to have about five or six maps maybe. Um, we want to keep the map pool kind of small because um, you know the maps really influence the balance. And so we really want to make sure that we've only got a few maps. We don't want to have to guess well, which map was that played on. There'll be some of that already because the maps are fairly different. It also lets us test some of the maps to see what kind of types work before we kind of go big and make a ton more maps. So five or six maps, all three races, all the units and abilities we could think of for those races. You guys have been saying, you know, this game will probably be out this year, you know, give or take. Uh, so we're going to assume you have like a six-month time frame to work with. So I'm curious how much the game could potentially change in that six months. I mean, could units, like entire units, disappear from the game? I mean, you're going to subtract abilities. Like, are you just tweaking little knobs? Or like, what are you, what are you balancing as the beta goes on? Well, I'm hoping it's not too much, but we will do anything. Like, we are not afraid to just rip something out if it's no good. So if there's a unit that's not working out, gone, right? If there's an ability we don't like, cut, right? If there's something we want to bring in that's new and better, done, right? So I'm hoping it's not too much. I'm hoping we've kind of gotten to a good place and that the community will help us sort of tune and polish it. But hey, they don't like it. We're going to change it, and that's just the bottom line. You guys are, are really hitting the esports stuff hard with this game. I mean, obviously, you know, StarCraft, Korea, it's kind of a, it's kind of a thing. Um, but uh, so you got all kinds of stat tracking and stuff going on there. I was actually pretty surprised at, like, the scope of that stuff. Can you kind of lay out what, what you're tracking and how you're presenting it to the player? Totally. So we've got a lot of more plans than what you even saw today. But what we're really hoping to do is provide enough stats for players, and more importantly, the right stats, so they can really focus on the things that will make them into better players. There's some stats we're intentionally not tracking that much of, at least during sort of live games. We just want you to focus on the stuff that really, really matters. Things like, are you making enough money? Are you spending it well? You know, are you getting the most out of your units? Are you kind of just throwing them away in useless battles? These are the kinds of stats that will really make a difference to players and really sort of help teach them the game. In addition, we're tracking stuff like, you know, what was your build order? And we're showing that to you in a score screen so you can sort of look at it and say, okay, oh, that's how he got to six, you know, pool rush me. That's how he got to rush me with all those zerglings. I couldn't imagine. How did he get six zerglings on the map so fast? You can look and see now right after the game and understand, oh, that's what he did. Maybe I should try that. Or maybe I can figure out a way to counter that by changing my build order. So really trying to provide enough tools for players to sort of learn and sort of understand what happened in the game. Uh, you've got a background in another big strategy series, Command & Conquer. Uh, so I was curious, what have you brought to kind of the StarCraft model of real-time strategy having worked on that other series? Do you feel like you brought any elements over or has, has one kind of influenced the other? How did that go down? Um, I can safely say almost absolutely nothing. Like, like I, I learned in, in Command & Conquer and other studios um, the basics of making games. Mm -hmm. But StarCraft is such a different game, and it's such a, sort of a different animal. And Blizzard's standards are so very different from almost anywhere I've ever worked. You know, it's sort of the things that they're focused on. Other studios I've worked at before have been much more about focusing, you know, first on the casual and, you know, the hardcore, you know, we'll get to them when we get to them. But Blizzard is exactly the opposite. Like, Blizzard is really focused on making sure that the game plays really well up until the very, very last moment. Like, you're 3,000 hours into the game and still feels really awesome and then making sure that the casual guys can at least just sort of get in and understand it. You know we sat down with, with the beta upstairs today and you know there is a massive tech tree for every right. faction you got to climb up. Right. How do you how do you make that accessible to to an audience as you know kind of as wide as wow? Absolutely well, it's, a, it's a huge challenge for us obviously. Starcraft is, is a game that doesn't really tier as well as Warcraft does. Like you don't go into Warcraft and suddenly find yourself doing you know a level 80 arena like that's not the first thing you do but you could accidentally click on that multiplayer button in Starcraft and that is the first <laughs> thing you're doing right so we're looking at trying to find ways to sort of encourage players to try some other systems before they jump to that end game content we don't want to block anybody out like you have to finish campaign before you can play that would be ridiculous but but we want players to obviously play through the campaign 
We've got uh, a bunch of skirmish mode stuff that we're planning on doing to sort of give players some progression as they're moving through the skirmish experience so they can practice against different levels of AIs. At the same time, we've got a bunch of challenge modes. We've got these, these sort of uh, small mini missions, five to ten minutes, that teach you and let you practice some really critical part of StarCraft II strategy. And so we think sort of between all of these sort of tools that are disposal, we're trying to create enough of an experience so you won't just be thrown into the deep end of the pool, you know, in hour one, maybe not till hour 40 or 50. You'll still be the deep end of the pool at the end of the day, but, but something that's to let you get used to the game, get comfortable with the game, and get you online. The final thing that we're doing I think is really important is we're really going to be working on player matchmaking. We did a lot of work on this on Warcraft 3. It was much better than it's ever been before, but we still had some holes. We're going to fill those up so that you're matched against opponents of your skill level. And when you're matched against opponents of your skill level, it's just a fun game. If, you, if they're too weak or they're too strong, it's not that good, right? But if we can manage to get you into a place where you're playing against people of your skill level and you're winning about half your games, I think players have a lot more fun. The custom game support, obviously huge with you know Warcraft 3, Dota, all that stuff. Uh, what, are, what are you guys building into the editor this time around to kind of take that stuff up to the next level? Well, this editor's been built with sort of the knowledge of what players were doing with it. Like, I think the Warcraft editor was built primarily for us, and, and it was kind of a surprise and exciting for all the developers to see how clever and creative the community was with that editor. Um, but this one is being built with all of that knowledge. This is the kinds of things they want to do from ground up. So it's an incredibly powerful tool. You can really remake our entire game in data if you wanted to very, very quickly. Or you can make a whole other game in data. Of course, that's the point. And so we're really, really hopeful that we can make this community as strong and as vibrant and be even more powerful, give them more options than they've ever had before. Do you ever feel like some one-upsmanship? Like, you know, you got to make your game that much better just to keep those guys from kind of taking the network over? Well, we always feel one-upsmanship with everybody, I suppose. Like, we want to be able to play our game, but no, not really. Like, I feel like, you know, great games are great games, and we're all just here to have a good time, sure. right? And I, and, and I love the stuff that they're getting to do, right? They're doing some really awesome stuff. I mean, you know, I guess I, I don't really feel bad about our competitors' games either. I, maybe I'm just too much of a gamer, right? But I just love, you know, I love playing Team Fortress. I love playing, you know, um, Dawn of War. Like, I love playing these other games. are really, really fun. So um, to see our fans making fun games is almost a little bit better. Right? It's even more fun, you know, and they're using sort of our art and our tools in ways we never imagined. It's just, it's really exciting to see. Very cool. And so finally, uh, I don't know what you're going to say to this, but I just want to see what you think right now is kind of a, a target range for the beta to hit. That's going to have to be when it's ready, man. All I'm right. sorry. All right. I had to try. Fair enough. Cool. All right, Dustin, appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, sir. Cool. I'm, uh, I'm going to get back to losing the game, and uh, I'm going to let this man finish the game. <laughs>